Hello students, Namaskar. Welcome back to the course on Organizational Behavior, Individual Dynamics in Organization. We continue with Module 6, Lecture 4. Today we look into Person Job Fit. I'm Dr. Abraham Silaisak. I am an Assistant Professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So we had discussed about the values, the importance of values. In the previous lecture, if you recollect, we have looked into values that cut across different culture, what is the relevance of each of these values in different culture contexts. Specific to that, we bring the organization into the center stage today. We look into what do you mean by person job fit, how a person, how an individual becomes relevant to the organization in the larger scheme of things. Today's theme, when people are in the roles, that align with their strengths, they are more likely to contribute to fresh ideas and solutions to challenges. When we look into person job fit, let's understand specifically what do you mean by person job fit. Person job fit refers to the compatibility between the individual's ability, skills and preferences and the requirements and characteristics of a particular job. So when we looked into the different uh, the tasks, duties and responsibilities of a particular job in, in one of the previous lectures. We also tend to analyze the cases, the knowledge, skills and abilities of that particular individual. So when we are looking into individual and job, your KSA and your TDRs, your tasks, duties and responsibilities that is warranted by any particular job, that should match with the knowledge, skills and abilities. The, this is the basis of person job fit. When we look into person job fit, achieving a good person job fit is crucial for both the individual and the organization. Take a moment and think why this is critical. When we look into every single individual, he has been inducted in the organization for a purpose. Some role, some, some particular work that has to be done with a particular individual. Let's say, let's look into uh, different uh, people and analyze this. Let's look into uh, an informal worker being given a contractual position for some task to be undertaken. So we specify the, the time limit, we specify the rate, whether it's piece rate, whether it is in terms of uh, the number of hours spent or what is the task, whether that is more critical. That is one aspect of it. But that said, we will always go for a person in terms of selection who is good at that particular work. Seldom we go for an individual who, who cannot accomplish the task, then that's common sense. We also look into uh, another aspect where uh, a regular employee has been inducted or recruited to an organization. He has or she has been given proper training with respect to the roles and responsibilities that she or he has to do. Now we tend to expect that she or he is going to perform in a desired manner. In a desired manner, the, de the, the desire is from the higher management. So this is specifically the person job fit, where we tend to understand or where we tend to expect rather that uh, the abilities of a particular individual, the knowledge, the skill set, all are in perfect match with the responsibilities, with the requirements of the particular job. When we look into uh, the person job fit, we have to understand and appreciate that there are two main components to consider for the person job fit. The first one is person organization fit, PO fit. Another important aspect is person job fit, which is PJ fit. Now, these two are two important things. These two are two different things. When we look into, many a time we make the mistake of considering PO fit is equal to PJ fit, which is not that case. We have to understand that person has come into the organization. He has certain expectations with respect to what he is going to perform, what he has to do as part of his day-to-day -day work activity within the organization. There is no doubt about it. He or she will also have certain expectation in terms of the work environment, in terms of the support of higher management, in terms of the support from the co-worker, from the supervisor, 
officer, from the subordinate, uh, every single aspect. Because in a multi-contextual organization, in a, a, a bigger organization in terms of the sales or in terms of the revenue, it is very difficult for an individual to actually uh, perform individually. It has to be a collective effort. Whatever said and done, individualism will not take that person very far. So there has to be some group that is coming into picture. There has to be a team that, com that comes into the picture. It is a coordinated effort of all the individuals, all the elements within that particular group that drive the task altogether. So this is where the person should introspect. I want you to introspect if you are a working professional, if you are a student also, please try to understand and please try to introspect whether you are a right fit for the organization. If you, if you tend to expect some particular cultural aspirations, if you tend to expect some personal goal orientation, is the organization going to suffice or is the organization satisficing that? Right? Not satisfy, satisficing that, that is more important in terms of PO fit. When we look into PJ fit, it's altogether a different matter, person job fit. And this is very uh, much oriented towards a person and the job in hand. Sometimes we see there are individuals who come into the organization hoping that or uh, creating a, an environment where they are the experts. They are the experts in the set field. They can do this with great ease. But once they are into the system, we see them struggling very badly. Now, this is a problem with the person job fit. What matching that was being planned or that was being thought of is not happening once the organization, once the individual is within the organization and she or he has seen the job and has started working the job. So when you are looking into the person job fit, you have to understand and appreciate there are two important aspects. One is the PO fit, which is a person organization fit and another is the PJ fit, which is the person job fit. There are some key points to understand about person job fit. The first and the foremost one is skills and competencies. When you look into skills and competencies, are the individual equipped for the particular job? That is more relevant when you are looking into skills and competencies. There are people who tend to fake these, these skills in, in their interview, in the selection processes. And once they are into the organization, they, they are going to suffer very badly. There are certain motivation and values that are required. Are you intrinsically motivated to work in that particular job? Or is some extrinsic motivation like, let's say, the salary or let's say uh, some of your peers working there or friends working there, you don't have an inherent liking towards the job, but it is moreover a kind of forced fit arrangement. Is that driving you? to the particular organization? Are you in the organization because somebody has pressurized you? Are you in the organization because there is some external motivation that is triggering you? You are not there in the organization because of intrinsic motivation. So I want you to introspect when you're looking into motivation and values. Another important aspect which has been detailed in the previous lecture is the cultural fit. Whether there are you know, different cultural aspirations within the group. There could be possible cultural orientations in the entire organization. But if you recollect the concluding point, the concluding remark in the previous lecture, I had mentioned that there are certain situations or there, there are certain core values that emerge as homogeneous values within the organization. So there could be differences among people in terms of cultural orientation. There could be differences among people in terms of language. There could be differences in terms of the way they perform, the way they act. But are they going into are, are, are all these values coming into one core set of elements, some, some homogeneous values, which categorically define the organization. So that is the cultural fit. Another important aspect is the personality fit. Sometimes you are, you are an introvert. Sometimes you are more open towards change. Sometimes you are uh, prone to uh, emotional instability. All these aspects are personality dimensions which define you. Is any single element in 
counter purpose with the objective of the organization is that if that the case then you are not the right fit in terms of personality so personality fit also happens to be one of the most important aspect when you consider the person job fit what is the significance of person job fit the first and important aspect why is person why we are advocating person job fit why we want people to be the right match for the particular job many a time we see that forced fit arrangements do not yield the necessary job satisfaction if i am not enjoying the job if i am not getting the right vibe in that particular job then i may not feel like continuing in the job you look into your friends you look into yourself if you have jumped or if you have moved from one organization to another one reason could be that you are not satisfied with the job it it could be the requirement of the job it could be that you are not feeling the the interest in the job anymore it was uh, it was enticing it was interesting it was encouraging in the beginning but not anymore so that could be the reason the job satisfaction would have dipped another important aspect could be employee performance when you are looking into person job fit the right person in the right job you feel that you see that the employees perform in a very great manner sometimes you feel that you know uh, this is the person who is for the job sometimes you see statements made like that so what happens is that many after after so many years there is one person that is coming into let's say leadership of something he drastically or she drastically changes the whole whole working of the office because person job fit another important uh, significant aspect of person job fit is reduced turnover you are more satisfied you are more interested you are more keen with the organization seldom do you feel that you have to move out of the organization so there is this reduced turnover also coming as a significance of person job fit another important as aspect is organizational commitment you are into the organization the organizer you you understand you feel that the organization is appreciating your efforts the organization is taking care of your needs the organization is supporting you in wherever uh, possible uh, is, uh, the organization is very keen on your personal as well as the professional development you feel that this is the organization i was searching for in my entire job search and you ultimately feel the commitment towards the organization another important or significant aspect could be employee engagement people tend to feel that you know the organization the person i am being uh, the right fit for the job i feel that i have to put my maximum effort i feel that if i put my maximum effort i am going to get the maximum return so that is where employee engagement becomes more significant in terms of person job fit another important aspect could be job crafting and adaptability now this is very significant especially in 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 the present uh a uh, scenario where the changing job environments are you in a position to adapt are you in a position to uh, make use of the 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 skills and knowledge and match in terms of the requirements of the job this is the relevance of job crafting there could be also situations of workplace well being sometimes you feel that uh, the job gives you a lot of time to relax the job gives you a lot of family time the job gives you a lot of uh, you know time to uh, enjoy or pursue your other passions or hobbies etc but still you are not satisfied still you are not satisfied it could be that you are not enjoying the job it could be that the individual who is under consideration might not liking the primary task he is doing if or if he or she is not enjoying the primary task which is the job in hand whatever be the relaxation whatever be the benefits whatever be the fringe benefits the organization is 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 showering upon that particular individual they are not going to enjoy or they are not going to appreciate the workplace well beings 
it gives the entire set of uh, relaxations in terms of it uh, in terms of facilities in terms of time in terms of all the benefits fringe benefits etc but still the workplace well being is significant only when there is person job fit another significance could be team dynamics you tend to be more engrossed in working in the team sometimes you feel that the day is not passing you feel that okay let's 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 assume that the work hours is from let's say 9 to 6 you feel that uh, it's taking a year to complete this 9 o'clock to 6 o'clock but there are days when you're working with a team you're working with a set of three or four people uh, you know you don't know when the whole day uh, you know got completed and you have to go back so there are these situations of team dynamics that happens when you are the right fit for the right job because you are enjoying the job you are enjoying every single finite element of that particular job another important aspect could be cost savings not only with respect to the to the organization with respect to the individual when you enjoy the task you tend to be in the right job you don't see every single uh, shift in terms of employment brings in an opportunity cost as well as a, a relative cost not only with respect to the organization organization will definitely have to incur the cost if an individual who has been trained nurtured by the organization suddenly moves out of the organization it is inevitable that the organization has to take a tall in terms of the cost but if you look into the flip side the individual also it is not easy for him or her to actually move from one organization to another he or she might have a certain opportunity cost he or might uh, she might also incur certain certain cost in terms of family in terms of the assets in terms of the movement in terms of the transport etc so person job fit also happens to be a significant aspect there and one of another important aspect could be innovation and creativity if you are in the right job you tend to have a more relaxed mind you tend to have a more free mind you tend to be more happy and more relaxed more fresh more flushed with ideas you tend to be more innovative you tend to be more creative so this is this these are some of the significance of person job fit now let's look into a theory of john holland when we look into john holland's personality job fit theory uh, it, it categorically states that the effort to match job requirements with personality characters is best articulated by the theory now let's look into john holland's personality theory which ultimately uh, underscores the effort to match job requirements with personality characteristics holland presents six personality types and proposes that satisfaction and the propensity to leave a position depend on how well individuals match their personalities to a job the theory also argues that satisfaction is highest and turnover lowest when personality and occupation are in agreement so john holland's theory signifies the relevance of personality let's look into holland's theory in detail in terms of different personality types in terms of different uh, characteristics that are being embodied and finally in terms of some of the some of the occupations that that are congruent to each particular type and personality characteristics the first and the foremost one is realistic when you are looking into the first type of realistic they prefer physical activities that require skill strength and coordination now the people of realistic type personality the characteristics are generally shy genuine persistent stable confirming and practical when we look into this type and this personality characteristics of being realistic the congruent occupations because they are they are more persistent with the task they are more stable they are more confirming the congruent occupations happens to be mechanic drill press operator assembly line worker farmer etc so you see that in realistic there is use of physical activity people tend to prefer 
more of physical activities that require the skill, strength, coordination, etc. They are more persistent, they are more confirming in terms of their personality characteristics. So, ultimately, the congruent occupations are something like assembly line worker, farmer, etc. The second important aspect is investigative. The second important type is investigative, which prefers activities that involve thinking, organizing and understanding. So here we look into a different aspect, unlike the realistic, where we prefer thinking, organizing and understanding. So we see that personality characteristics like analytical, original, curious, dependent are coming into picture and the congruent occupation happens to be uh, either a biologist, economist, mathematician or even news reporters because they prefer uh, to involve themselves into thinking and organizing and understanding the activities of the world that go around them. Even uh, the case of economist or mathematician is no different in terms of the type and in terms of the personality characteristics. The third important type would be social. Social which prefers activities that involve helping and developing others. So, so as it's a functional word, it's more of uh, existing for the society, existing for others. That is the personality type, the characteristics being sociable, friendly, cooperative and understanding. So you see that such individuals who are more sociable, more friendly, more cooperative, they tend to be in the field of either a social worker, mainly teachers, counsellors, clinical psychologists, etc. Hardly will you see a teacher who is not sociable, who is not friendly, because that, that's, that's a demand of the job a teacher has, that's a demand a counsellor should have, that's a demand a clinical psychologist's job has, that he or she should be friendly, sociable and cooperative, otherwise their work itself goes for a toss. Another important type would be conventional, which prefers a rule regulated, orderly and unambiguous activities and mainly the personality characteristics are confirming efficient, practical, unimaginative and inflexible. So you see that the individuals of this type, they prefer rule regulated, orderly, uh, you know, they want the activities to be very clear, there should not be any ambiguity, obviously the, the options would be accountant, corporate manager, bank teller, file clerk, etc. They don't work in any ambiguous situations, they don't work or bring in terms of or do any, any uh, activities which are not confirming in its uh, origin, they are not uh, uh, inefficient, they are very efficient, they are very practical, but they are not imaginative as required. Uh, enterprising is yet another important aspect which prefers verbal activities in which there are opportunities to influence others and attain power, but the personality characters would be something like self-confident, uh, ambitious, energetic and obviously domineering. So you see that when you want people uh, to be enterprising where they have importance given to verbal activities, uh, where there is uh, inherent uh, liking towards influencing others and attaining power, we see people like lawyers, real estate agents, public relations specialists, small business managers, what we call a street smart uh, attitude. All these people are enterprising before they, because they tend to prefer verbal activities. They tend to uh, prefer opportunities. They tend to look into situations where they can influence others and attain power. And the final type would be artistic who prefer to be um, ambiguous and unsystematic activities that allow creative expressions. The, the personality characteristics specifically would be imaginative, disorderly, idealistic, emotional and impractical. When you look into, look into artistic people, needless to say, we have, uh, we have painters, we have musicians, writers, interior decorators who prefer, uh, you know, ambiguity, who prefer lack of uh, systematic uh, approach. They, they, they are more random, they are more unsystematic, which allows a creative expression in their actual predisposition. So these were some of the typical Holland's typology of personality and congruent occupations. That said, we have to understand the Holland's job fit theory 
the relationship among occupational personality times with the help of this hexagon. We have gone into detail with respect to the different uh, personality types, their job characteristics and what are the jobs which generally come under these uh, specific personality types and characteristics. But when we look into Holland's job fit theory, the conclusion is this hexagon where you see realistic, investigative, artistic, social, enterprising and conventional being marked as different uh, points, corner points of the hexagon. Interestingly, Holland's job fit theory states that the, the aspects which are nearby, let's say conven conventional and realistic, they tend to go hand in hand. Similarly, let's say uh, social and artistic. There are some aspects of being social congruent to being artistic. But when we look into the diametrically opposite components, let's look into somebody who is very realistic and somebody who is very social. They might not gel well. They might not be better suited for the same job. Realistic people might are totally in opposition in terms of their abilities, in terms of their skill sets when you are comparing them with social. Similarly, if you are an enterprising person, you will not tend to have a level of liking for investigative jobs. You don't tend to, uh, you know, uh, get impressed by people who are more investigative. Similarly, with respect to conventional and artistic. So, if you are in the diametrically opposite uh, dimensions, then Holland's job fit theory says that you are not gelling well or you are incongruent. Whereas, if you are similar, if you are adjacent to each other, let's say you are conventional you, and enterprising, there are situations where people can gel together when they are adjacent to nearby or they are adjacent like conventional and enterprising. So this is what the Holland's job fit theory specifically mentions. Whereas when we understand the job fit theory, we have to also understand and appreciate there are certain disadvantages. It's We have only seen about the advantages. There are certain disadvantages of the absence of person job fit, which is the fitting uh, conclusion for, for all these aspects. One is job dissatisfaction. Whatever we have discussed, we have to just look into the opposite of that. Another could be the decreased performance every individual. If I am not, I am I'm having a personal understanding that I am not the right fit for the particular job, then definitely I I am, I'm, my performance is going to get affected. I am becoming more dissatisfied with the job. Ultimately, my performance is going to get affected. There is an increased turnover possibility. Burnout and stress becomes very common within the organization. There is a reduced organizational commitment. We have seen everything in the positive stride, but in the absence of a person job fit, we see that there is a reduced organizational commitment. We see that there is negative impact on team dynamics. We tend to see that people are not becoming or are not the right fit for the particular job. And obviously there are missed innovation and creativity chances. Because you are not flush with ideas, which I've already mentioned. You are not feeling that you are in the right job. You are not feeling that you are the person for the particular job. In those contexts, in those situations, you tend to be disappointed, dissatisfied, your performance suffers and moreover, there is no room for innovation and creativity. That said, we conclude this lecture. I would like to stress on one important aspect. In the Holland's theory, if you have seen, try to introspect yourself where you belong. Are you a realistic person? Are you an artistic person? Are you more investigative in nature? Are you more conventional in nature? You tend to introspect within yourself, within the Holland's personality dimensions where you stand, what type of personality you are. With respect to that, you tend to see those characteristics. With respect to that, you tend to analyze whether you are in the right job. Sometimes you might be performing well only because you, you are extrinsically motivated, because you need the money, you need the, uh, the required money to run the family for the maintenance, maybe to pay some EMIs, etc. and etc. But 
you are not inherently satisfied with that particular job. Try to introspect within your organization, in your field, in your job, are you the right person, are you the right fit for the particular job? Are you having a personality which is strikingly different from what the job demands? Maybe it is just a good marriage right now, but it eventually will break down. So please tend to introspect with this lecture that where you stand. So there is a practical orientation I would like to give with these lectures, not only theoretical understanding, but also uh, the, the level of practicality associated with your job. I am giving you a chance to introspect within yourself with respect to the Holland's theory. Where do you stand? Are you in a job which is the right fit for you? That's all from lecture today. Uh, we will see you in the next class uh, with more information on the, the values as well as the importance of job fit. Thank you for listening to me patiently. See you in the next class. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.